had a discussion with my students on what our uh, best way to move forward from here is. So we were left with two choices. One is that I paint the sky and then the mountains and come in and actually paint in and around all of this top part of the uh, trees. Or I use a um, drawing gum, liquid frisket, um, resist uh, product, and paint that instead on top of these flowers, leaving little holes for sky holes, leaving holes for the mountains to poke through, and, um, and then be able to paint the sky and the mountain rather loosely. Uh, so I've decided to go the, the route of using the liquid frisket. Um, one thing that I have to be very aware of is that wherever I paint this will be a finished edge. And so I have to be quite accurate with how I paint it on here. And I want to bring it down far enough. I don't have to bring it over the whole trees, but I need to bring it down far enough that I'm not going to accidentally bring blue into places I don't want it. So let's go ahead and dive into this part of it. Move that out of the way. And um, a couple of preparations for this is that I like to pour just a small amount of this into a container so that I'm not uh, mudding up my big container when I go to dive back in and get more. It doesn't take a huge amount. That's probably going to be about enough. I can always get more if I need it. Um, and then the other thing is that the brush that I'm going to use to make it so that I can clean this back out of it, I want to wet the brush and then I want to put a little bit of liquid soap on it. And so I have a um, soap container here from some shampoo from uh, a hotel. Get enough here. I don't need a whole lot of soap, but I need enough to just dampen that with soap. And so if I have soap on here, then the liquid frisket is not going to um, stick to it. And I'm going to be able to wash the brush out, which as soon as I'm finished, I need to wash this brush out. So now we're going to start at the end here. Uh, let's look at that picture again. I won't be able to get these quite as small because I've got so much pink up there. But let me think about it being an interesting top up here as I go through. I'll start at this end here. And just want to sort of let that think about how the shape of those and some of those pinks can stay and get purple on top of them. It'll affect the look of that purple, but I don't think it'll be bad. I'm just working my way across here. I want to work fairly quickly so that um, I don't uh, get the brush drying too fast with the, the frisket in it. Let that have just a few little spots out there. Remember, everything I paint is going to be visible later. So I, I need to be pretty accurate here. I might take it down to maybe about there. And maybe, maybe that's a little sky hole. Let's let that be a little sky hole there. Sky holes, where the sky shows through what we're working on. And even if I have pink in a place, I could make a sky hole there. That would work. Let's let this be. And maybe let some of that pink um, not be so bright. And let the uh, mountain sort of take purple in on top of it, especially this side, which is the um, shady side. Some of those are a little uneven. I don't think we have sky holes down quite this far, but yeah, we won't be painting that far down. Uh -huh. But I am seeing what looks like a sky hole right there, and it's sort of an uneven, um, the way the branches come together makes that sky hole interesting. And let's just leave a few sky holes up in there. Let that come up. Find the ends of those. So some of these come up, and they're just like little skinny branches that come up. 
just sort of thinking about, continuing to think about how the intersection between these two was part of what I found very appealing and very interesting. So I want to make this intersection interesting. I wanted to have some little branches up in here and some of those uneven, maybe some of them going out at a little angle. And then that's all pink. And yes, I am seeing some places in here that look like maybe some of that pink shows through. Um, we'll leave a little space and then I let me, so that I don't paint blue where I don't want it. Let's get this all down in here further. So I'm leaving a few little sky holes in there, maybe not that many. If I have too many, it's going to look a little strange. And they need to be somewhat uneven where they are. So as we come back in here, uh, this is where the trees start coming down. I need to be careful about not getting too high up in the world there. And maybe these little spots have to be smaller and skinnier. Smaller and skinnier. I'm still seeing a sky hole or two here, so let's just leave a few. And that'd be a little skinnier, a little uneven top to that going to be so visible. Maybe not that big of a hole. Let's just bring that in there a little more. got plenty of this so let's just go ahead and put it down in here further just to give myself a, a little more of a barrier here and let me just make it a little uneven just in case we have some problems with this lifting I don't think we will but better to give this an uneven edge so that if it does change the color and the look of it it's going to match or at least follow the feeling of what I had above and yeah, let's bring that down. And that was a sky hole there, so. I'm not gonna worry about those little drips down in here further. They're not gonna be in my way. I can lift them off after they dry. Is that feeling somewhat natural in there? I don't have to use this all up, but might as well make my uh, intersection up there big enough that I'm not fighting it. And I don't think I need this anywhere else. Um, what I'm going to do with the browns, we're going to be painting up next to what's there. I don't need to keep uh, any resist. So it's surprising. See, it didn't take that much. I had maybe mm, an eighth of an inch in here. Uh, this is a little shot glass size container. Okay, wash my brush, get totally clean. Now, while that's drying, because it's almost dry up in there, but it needs to be totally dry before I do anything with it. And I'm just I'm sure I want that, okay, to go lift that up. I wanted to make sure that that was not sky holes there. Get that washed off my brush right now. No waiting, no thinking about it, no talking about something else. There's a few little places where we drop some of that uh, uh, masking down the bottom here, and I'd want it out of here now. So let's get that pulled up wherever it got in the way and is dry. And, ooh, gotta be careful. 
it has a little bit of color in it and I see that if I'm not careful and, and it's a little bit damp it, it made a, a mark there but it's in a place that's going to go dark so I'm not I don't have to worry too much. Okay so that's drying. Now we can work on the brown and the green mixture down in here and you know we do have some little pieces of pink that we will be painting around. Um, yeah I think painting around those is better than trying to um, uh, have them masked out. So the brown. I want to start us color of brown, I'm sorry, the lightest color of brown in here, and then add some darker pieces into it. And then we'll come in and maybe work on the green a little bit more and maybe not, depending on how it, it's feeling. Now that brown, there's a couple of ways that I could go with that, the lightest part of the brown. Um, this is uh, French ochre which is sort of a yellowy brown all in its own and could be used as my lightest shade in there. Um, the darker, I've got some ultramarine or <sighs> burnt sienna here that has had a little bit of purple in it so it's, it's a little bit dirty uh, and so that's a little bit darker and so the two of them working together might be nice. So let me just take this and we'll leave it just a little bit dirty. I won't worry about the fact that it's got dirtied up a bit, but I want to make it a bit thicker. I had a little bit of water in my dish there, my pan. So there is that. And then we have, and you know, if you don't have something like the, um, the French ochre, you could still use the burnt sienna. And let me just show you how you could mix another color that's similar. This is the other thing is, you know, knowing how we can um, alter things and make them work for us. Uh, we don't always have what we want. You know, um, there's several ways to make so many things. So if I'm still working with that burnt sienna, which is my favorite little brown, uh, I can add a yellow to it. I can add that new gamboge to it. My new gamboge is slightly dirty with a green, but that's okay because we're making brown out of it. I take that and mix that yellow into there, and that's going to get me a similar color. A similar color to what that yellow ochre was. Yeah, I like that one quite a bit. And maybe if I don't want it quite that yellow, I could add just a touch of blue to it. So opposite on the color wheel from orange is blue. And that will gray this down a little bit. And then we're gonna add just a little more of the burnt sienna in there. So that's a very slightly grayed down version. A little more yellow there, a little more grayed there. And then when we go to put the darker burnt sienna on top of it, um, it's going to work out really nicely. And the burnt sienna, if we see, think that's too red, I can also add blue to that, make it gray it down a little bit, make it into more of a gray brown. Okay, so now Let's just play with this. I can use both of those two browns if I want to. And remember that my trees are going to go dark, so if I paint up onto the trees, it's not going to hurt anything because I'm going to be going dark on top of them eventually anyway. Um, so let's just start looking in here about what we want to do. And I can paint these entire areas, this lighter brown, bring it up to, do we want that pink there? Hmm, doesn't have to be there. Let's just paint over it. And I can paint up onto this tree if I want, which will save me from having to worry about what my intersection is there. But I do need to be sure that if I paint up onto the trees, I take it up into the trees a little bit. So this is my other brown. Uh, my other pale brown. I don't want to go too far with this because I still want to control things 
uh, although I need to draw it. Mm. You know, today is a little bit cooler, so let's just go a little further because this has to dry. And I want to keep some of that green. I don't want to lose my green. So let's just soften the edge between that green, soften this edge between this green. And let's bring it up right next to that green and maybe bring it onto it just a little tiny bit. And there were some spaces in here that I had started to put. Now this is too dark for right now. It's going to go darker later, but let's just keep it light to start with. I can bring that right up onto those trees. Now here's where my pinks are that I want to keep some of those. So let's just carefully paint around those bits of pink. Because if I paint over them, they're going to dull down immediately. And I still want those a fairly bright pink. Okay, so now the sheen is starting to get off of this over here. So I think we're ready to start putting a little bit darker brown into it. And I'm seeing a little dark brown coming in and onto this tree. Is this brown thick enough? Maybe not. Let's make it a little bit thicker. It's bleeding up into here a lot. So I'm feeling like if it's a little bit thicker, I can, and I'm going to put just a little bit of burnt sienna into it to gray it down just a little hair. Okay, so that's feeling better. And all of these lines of stuff are going this direction, so let's just put a little piece right in here. Yeah, I don't mind that bleeding the way it did. It's okay. And then maybe a little bit up into those. And it's just those are going to go dark, so I can go ahead and put some of this brown up into those trees. And that's brown in between there. Now, right now, my balance of colors is just not really quite what we need. I may have to come in and really enliven some of this green up, too, because it feels like it's going to be a little too light. Let's go ahead and just put that up on top of that green that I had. And maybe this needs to go just a little bit darker there. Yeah, that, that feels a little better. Still leaving some light behind, but not a huge amount. And then these are going to be going darker and Let's just let that paint around some of that pink. Painting around always takes a lot of concentration to make sure that it does what I want it to do. And then I feel like I need to come right in with Ooh, some sap green here that's fairly thick. Let's just put some sap green that's fairly thick in here. And then dry brush it in on here and uh, sort of dry brush it in on top of that brown that I had there so that I'm getting a little scattering of green in here without it being too much. And, you know, just put a little more in there and I think we'll be fine. You know, just so I know where the edge of this branch is, let me just take a little bit of that off. Okay. This can start feeling really sloppy. Yeah, let's let that have a little break there. Find the edges of that. All right. 
I start talking soft when I'm trying to concentrate and I'm not positive what I'm doing. And bring that right up onto that tree. Bring that right up onto this tree. And then I should have had a and add a little bit of that paler green into the sap green because I'm finding that I'm needing to just paint this right in now. Um, it's going to blend a little bit in there and it comes in a little wet like I just did. It's going to run a little more, which may or may not be a good thing. Uh, those browns are all a little bit darker back in there, so I don't have to thin that too much. Is this looking messy or is it working, you guys? And I'm not sure I like these pieces of pink in here. Let's just get rid of that a little bit further. I think that was, it was feeling too much like just a little sausage there. And it's like, what is this stupid sausage doing here? When you're putting down abstract shapes, which is basically what I'm doing here, um, it's sometimes hard to convince ourselves that that's what they should be because we're wanting to have them identified as something. Uh, and we're not able to really. And so how do we work with that? How do we feel comfortable with that? These guys are going to have shadows coming off of them. That dark's going to go up in there. And this brown is working across through here. right over those trees just because then I don't have to worry about these funny little corners that are happening uh, otherwise and then come back in and put a little more green on top of these green spaces a little more green on top of that green space that's looking a little bit better and that is feeling a little too light right there I want some light, especially when I get down into here. I don't want to lose all my light down in there. But all of this is starting to get to be where it's a little bit darker brown back in here. So I think we can just come in with that little bit darker brown. And take it right in up on top of those trees. Let's just take that up. Let me take this up into here just a wee touch. It's going to help me identify where those trees are too. They're going to be going darker, but this at least helps identify where they are versus what the brown is. And we're going to have some darker back in there if we put those trees in. Let's just bring this out to this grass and alter the color of it a little bit with my, and I'm doing things horizontal or this diagonal because I want this feeling that there's shadows running between these trees and that's the shadows are coming that direction. And so we need to identify that. And now this area down here, let's just come in with this a little bit lighter to start with. right in on top of that green that I sort of threw into there. And then a little bit thicker with that same color 
unevenly here to make this sort of look like plowed uh, walked on ground and then we'll come back in with some more darker places it's definitely darker right in underneath of this grass Maybe that'll make that feeling of a road there and this tree has got a dark right that runs in through there okay and then let's sort of half dry brush in here now that this is drying a little bit to get a little more of this feeling of the uneven ground and back in here I've got a shadow that runs probably from another tree back there And then I feel like I need some green right in here. That feels better. Take that up into that tree just a little tiny bit. Let's let there be some green in between these trees right back there. And what else needs to be dealt with here? Um, a little dry brush across here for these shadows. And a little dry brush on the edges of that. Let that come in there maybe go a little more brownish right here that's good a little darker on some of this brown uh, it's starting to come together but I'm not sure that I particularly like all of it let's get rid of some of that that felt like too big of a thing of pink and just once again a little dry brush across through there when I come back in and do the dark of these trees, it's going to change things quite a bit. Uh, so not to panic yet. Right now we're at that icky stage where I've got lots of um, uh, lots of what do I want to say? Midtones and no darks. And I'm still trying to save some whites and some light spaces, but I'm starting to have those go away too. And let's see if we take this and go upwards with this dry brushing, then I can get a feeling of sort of short grass in there. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, this is working. I like this for this feeling of of uh, grass growing here. Still working with that sap green. Doing maybe a little uneven back and forth. This forward area here is more likely to show the grass than as we get further back here. Uh, this can still get dry brush, but maybe not the upward pull and maybe some of this more yellowy color. Hmm. Now I'm going to cut my brushes. Yeah, let's just do a little bit of this here. More yellowy green. And more of that there. We're getting darker just because it's coming in on top of that brown, which is good and bad, right? Good and bad. Do a little more of this. I don't want to lose some of those light spaces yet. I don't want too many of them. Uh, let's see. Where is a tree? These are trees. So that goes a little dark off of that tree. Uh, there was another one back in there. Thank you. 
I will be able to come back in and do quite a bit more uh, with the dark on that next layer. And then we can see a little better once we've got that pink back in being beautiful and the dark branches in what we have to do to finish this bottom. I wanted to keep it relatively loose. I don't want to have too much here, but I do feel like, yeah, let's, I'll enliven a little bit of this with this more yellowish green. Because there's this beautiful feeling of um, spring that I like. And I guess those little pink bits hanging down are okay now. I was unhappy with them to start with, but now that I made them smaller, they work better. Okay, and oh, there's a few more places here where maybe this is needs to be green in between those trees. And this is going to be some darker trees back there, so not too much panic on that. Uh, where else are we? Just seeing if there's any little little spots, but I can deal with a lot of those later. A little rough looking, looks a little strange with that blue up there. Not quite dry yet, so this is gonna have to dry before I can do anything with that top. So I'm gonna take a break.